Hey guys, it's Will here, and tonight we've got another Fate of Conor mission for you. This is going to be uh, the number five mission, although only the second one I've done on the channel. But uh, yeah, I've not been able to uh, to do them all as bat reps, but this one should be good fun. Um, it kind of feels like a little bit of a role reversal from the previous uh, mission that we did, the one in week three. Uh, the mission is called Countdown to Destruction. And basically, this particular planet, Drenthal, has been so overrun by chaos forces, particularly pox walkers that the imperial forces have decided to just detonate a fusion reactor um, to destroy the planet and then get out of there um, so the mission sort of takes place they've just detonated it and now they are essentially fleeing but we've got to go through the chaos lines to get there and that's going to be the tough part so the mission is um, uses a variation on the standard Dawn of War deployment. The Imperial player gets the normal 12 inches. The Chaos player actually has up to the halfway point to play, so they can uh, start very close. So the action is going to be going right from the start. And um, then, yeah, the Imperial player just has to break through the Chaos lines and off the board the other end. And they need to get, I believe it's a third of their army off, um, and that third is determined by, um, what's it called? Uh, not points, not, not proper points. Um, power level. You need to get a third of your power level off the board. Um, so it should make for quite an interesting mission. Um, it also has the special rule that at the end of every Chaos turn, the last six, the bottom six inches of the Imperial side of the board um, essentially are removed. They collapse. So anything within six inches and then subsequently 12, then 18, so on, uh, on the Imperial side is just killed automatically, except flyers. Um, and flyers also don't count for moving units off the board. So uh, yeah, should be um, a bit of a challenge because I've got to get my guys up the table and break through the chaos lines. You know, I can't hold back, kill them and then drive through. I need to start going through straight away. So I'm bringing my salamanders again and my opponent for tonight will be Sam, who's using his Iron Warriors. We're going 2000 points to uh, give us some uh, um, some room to play around with different options in the army and uh, yeah without further ado let's take a look at the armies so here's my salamanders for tonight 2000 points one battalion's worth and uh, yeah I've gone for a fairly mobile force here as you can see with plenty of transports uh, but starting down here I've got Vulcan and the librarian as my HQ combo again it's worked pretty well in some games recently so uh, yeah gonna give that another try and then for my troops, I got a five-man tactical squad with Melter Combi Melter, ten-man tactical squad with Plasma Gun Plasma Cannon, and ten-man tactical squad with Flamer Combi Flamer Heavy Bolter. Um, still trying to work out what the optimum loadout for a tactical squad is, or even if there is a an optimum, but trying a few different combos to see what works. And transport-wise, I've got two Razorbacks and a Rhino, which is going to mean some of the guys are left on foot. I originally wanted more Rhinos, but for some reason when I was putting this together, I couldn't find all my Rhino top hatches. As you see, I have um, removable hatches on all of these, so I've had to go Razorbacks because I haven't got enough Rhino hatches tonight. wanted a nice fast element to my force, so I've got my bikes, which are obviously actually my, uh, my Raptor Riders. Grav, Grav, Combi Grav in here. And then a Razorback, Melter, Combi Melter. I think, did I say Razorback? I meant Land Speeder, obviously, it's a Land Speeder. Hoping to keep that pretty close to Vulcan because um, it's going to need his rerolls to make those weapons particularly effective. Then for Elites, 10 man Stern Guard squad, three Combi Melters in here, two, uh, one Combi Flamer, and two Heavy Flamers. So this is the loadout I ran in 6th and 7th edition and with combat squadding and keeping Vulcan nearby I expect them to still do pretty well but they're going to be riding in a land raider tonight now it seems a little bit strange using troops that aren't really assault troops in a heavy transport like this but I think it's going to help them get into range keep them protected from any iron warriors alpha strike and uh, yeah get them up the board where they need to be so got me Land Raider Redeemer there, standard loadout, assault cannons, heavy bolt, uh, sorry, assault cannons, multi-melter, flamestorm cannons, and then a Predator backing that up, 
Um, I actually picked the wrong predator out of the box here. This should be auto cannon and las cannons, not all las cannons. So I'll switch that up in a second. And then we've got five terminators as well: assault cannon um, and power fists, um, storm bolters, the sort of standard loadout. Not gone for the flamer tonight because I'm planning to deep strike these guys, and obviously that's not going to really suit a flamer because of the nine-inch distance you have to keep away. So there we have it. A fairly aggressive, fast-moving for a tank army, 2,000 points of Salamanders. And here's my opposition for tonight, Sam's Iron Warriors. Uh, we've got 2,000 points here again, and this time he's gone for a battalion and a spearhead detachment. And the aim with this list has really been to uh, make a fluffy Iron Warriors list, the sort of things you'd actually expect them to have, um, rather than an out-and-out -out competitive list, and see how it works. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look. So, leading the battalion, we've got a Sorcerer with a Force Sword, and a Demon Prince with the Hellforged Sword, and obviously Wings, as you can see there. Um, so they should be quite a nasty little combination together. Then cultists being ably represented by these gene stealer cultist guardsmen um you know the mutations of the alien and the mutations of the demon they're all mutations kill them kill them all uh first squad of chaos marines 10 man strong with bolt pistols and chainswords and you got a couple of melter guns in there as well i think i see it's a melter gun and a combi melter and uh is there a power sword in there no and they're riding in a rhino. Second squad is just eight guys. These are running bolters with melter, combi melter. And they've got another rhino as well. And backing them up is a hell brute with a plasma cannon and power fist. Then for his spearhead detachment over here, he's leading that with his uh, chaos lord, who I don't think has seen the light of day since the last Tale of Four Gamers. And then we've got his Havocs, five of them with four autocannons, three obliterators, two vindicators, and two forge fiends with Hades autocannons and ectoplasm cannons. So uh, a lot of armor here. Um, in fact, I think in a very rare turn of events, Sam is possibly running more vehicles than me. Uh, let's see, we've got three, we've got seven over here. Uh, yeah, seven to six. So. Uh, should make for an interesting game as these guys try to hold the line and stave off the salamander's advance. So in tonight's mission, um, Sam has a 24 inch deployment zone and I only have a 12 inch deployment zone and I need to move forward pretty quickly because uh, basically the back six inches falls off at the end of every turn as the uh, fusion reactor explodes. So uh, I've pushed up right to the front of my deployment zone with everything basically got an armoured spearhead over one side looking to uh, break through on one front um, with my bikes over the other side acting as a somewhat of a distraction. Uh, the stern guards are in the Rhino, uh, sorry the Land Raider along with Vulcan and the Librarian who's picked Null Zone and um, Might of Heroes as, the, um, as his psychic powers and then I've got the big tactical squad in there, Melter squad in there half the plasma squad in there with the other half on foot and the predator who has now got the correct armament modelled um, heading down the flank. Sam has kind of mirrored me unfortunately I was hoping to get more of a refused flank style tactic but he's uh, blockaded this side of the board quite sternly with his tanks and monsters. Um, Hellbrute a little bit over to the side and the um, uh, Havocs right at the back Obliterators, like my Terminators, are in Deep Strike Reserve, but he's pushed his cultists right forward to the front of my deployment zone, so uh, hoping to slow me down, but I think the firepower of this army shouldn't really struggle to get through those very easily. But we shall see. There's no Seize the Initiative in this mission. Salamanders get to go first automatically, and we need to break out across the other side of the board. Essentially, it's how much power level I can get off the board. I need to get a third of my army by power level off the other side of the board. So, here we go with Salamander, turn one. Turn one, and the Salamander army pushes forward in force, looking forward to uh, the crashing the enemy lines. Uh, the bikes moved up here to just in range of the Hellbrute. 
and the whole line of tanks pushed up with the speeder swinging across behind to uh, make itself not the priority target even moved the squad with a plasma ca cannon up into the woods not that that will save me from most of the iron warrior shooting thanks to their legion trait and i also deep struck the terminators down here nine inches out from the havocs shooting phase the land raider started off rolling double six for its flamestorm cannons and almost completely wiping out the cultist squad who were finished off by the razorback also went for the vindicator but between my multi melter and assault cannon only managed to put a single wound onto the um, the lead vindicator there over the other side the predator fired at the rhino and missed with everything thanks to having moved but the land speeder and the plasma cannon from that squad had a bit of a better time um, as did the uh, Razorback put in a total of hang on seven wounds on that Rhino in total my hope was to pop it this turn to assault the guys inside it next turn but who knows they might get out of their own accord um, finally the Terminators didn't have a great round of shooting thanks to the cover they only killed a single Havoc but then we managed to uh, pull off the charge had to use a command point to do it but got exactly nine and wiped out the havocs so uh, that's a pretty good kill although i've got some seriously badass stuff bearing down on me and sam's just about to put his obliterators on so uh, those terminators may be very short-lived but they've done the job they've made a hole and they've cleared out his um his uh, devastator equivalent the havocs so yeah Pretty good start for the Salamanders, but it's certainly not over. Here we go, Iron Warriors, turn one. Turn one for the Iron Warriors, and they did what they do best, blow stuff up with big guns. So, uh, Obliterator's deep struck down here, and this squad disembarked from the Rhino. But other than that, everything pretty much stayed still, apart from the Demon Prince and the Hellbrute that ran forward to uh, try and slow me up a bit. Shooting saw the Terminators wiped out, but not before losing one to the Psychic Phase from that damn Sorcerer, who also put Prescience onto that Forge Fiend, and the Demon Prince put Unholy Strength on himself, Diabolical Strength on himself right then um yeah the shooting of this squad killed two more of the terminators and the final two were finished off by the obliterators and the forge fiend that hadn't been prescienced used the um demon forge stratagem which allowed him to reroll everything and uh, that combined with the uh, rerolls from the nearby um Chaos Lord that were affecting the other vehicles left two of my Razorbacks or two of my tanks dead Razorback and Rhino both blown up uh, the Rhino from oh sorry the Razorback from shooting and then the Rhino in combat with the Demon Prince the Vindicator over there also targeted the Predator and left it on just three hull point three wounds sorry I'm getting wounds and hull points muddled up tonight but uh, yeah basically long story short really good turn of shooting for the forces of chaos uh, taking down a couple of my transports and my terminators demon prince got into combat with the rhino and killed it uh, this forge fiend hellbrute didn't fare so well uh, only doing one wound with shooting to the razorback and failing to do anything in combat despite having uh, got off the charge so uh, yeah that's delayed me a lot I've lost a couple of my key units um, I was hoping that maybe I'd lose four of the terminators and one more could exit the board for the points but uh, alas that was not to be but we still got the bikes we still got the land raider let's see if we can punch a hole in these lines so um, every turn at the start of well the end of the chaos players turn the bottom six inches fall off the end of the table from my deployment zone so uh, anything in there dies so uh, I carried on pushing forward because that's what I really needed to do with this army. Uh, bikes came down the flank here. Land Raider and Razorback up the center. The Razorback pulled itself out of combat. Um, the squad had already disembarked and proceeded to open fire with their melter guns on the Hellbrute. And as you can see, it was suitably effective. There is no more Hellbrute. Over the other side, the Tactical Marines and Land Speeder focused the majority of their fire on the Demon Prince 
and eventually um, didn't manage to take him down. It took the Land Raider Redeemer with its Flamestorm cannons to finish off the Demon Prince. Um, and then the Multi-Melter multi -melter missed, but the Assault Cannon put a wound on the Vindicator. Predator continued to have a terrible day, missing with everything. It's still hitting on fours, it was stationary, and I missed with everything. Was hoping to take that Rhino out, but uh, alas, not today. Um, bikes had a better time of it, killing one of the obliterators and putting another wound on one of them, so uh, that's that threat lessened. And uh, yeah, that was about it. So, um, not a great turn. I did clear some of the most immediate threats, but I'm still dealing with two Vindicators, two Forge Fiends, two Chaos Squads, and the Obliterators, and I've got to punch through that to get off the board. So, let's see what these guys can do to counter me. So the Iron Warriors stepped up the aggression this turn, trying to drive the Salamanders back. Uh, that squad there, the um, Chaos Squad, hopped back in their Rhino. The Obliterators pushed up to the bikes, and the Vindicators and the rest of his effective gun line stayed still, apart from the second Chaos Squad that disembarked from their Rhino, ready to take on the Tactical Marines. Psychic Phase, he rolled a double one trying to cast Prescience onto the Forge Fiend, saved the uh, Perils with a, um, a command point, so uh, didn't Perils, but then uh, managed to get off Smite on the Land Raider for one wound. Vindicator on that side finished off the Predator in the shooting phase and this uh, Chaos Squad dropped one Tactical Marine. The f this Forge Fiend put a couple of wounds onto the Land Raider, whereas this one tried to do the same but didn't hurt the Land Raider but did kill a couple of guys from this Tactical Squad. And over on this side the Obliterators killed two of the bikes before charging in and suddenly discovering that he didn't actually have power fists anymore. Forge Fiend, um, Obliterators lost power fists somewhere along the line, so that combat was a stalemate and the bikes will hopefully be sneaking off next turn. Hopefully. Um, he also charged some of his vehicles. The Rhino charged the Razorback to a pointless delaying stalemate and the Vindicator had a very bad time, had to use a command point to re-roll the charge against the Land Raider, lost a bunch of hull point, uh, wounds on the way in with the, um, uh, from the Flamestorm cannons and the Assault Cannon, and then lost even more wounds from the Frag Assault Launcher, failed to do any damage, and then the Land Raider actually put a wound on it in combat. However, I think Sta Sam is still holding this as a success, because he did do some damage in the shooting phase and that Land Raider cannot shoot next turn. Even if I move out of combat there is no way around that so I don't think he's counting that as too much of a loss. Chaos Squad over here, charged the Tactical Squad, did one wound for none in return but none of my damaged units fled. Um, but I am a little bit tied up with four units locked down in combat so that's going to make getting off the board and doing damage some uh, a difficult feat. Uh, it's still finely poised. I've lost a few too many units, but I might still have enough to get off the board. Anyway, let's go to Salamander, turn three. Coming into this turn, my assault had been starting to bog down, particularly with all the combats I was tied up in. So now was the time to bring the Stern Guard out. So Stern Guard disembarked, and uh, Vulcan and the chaplain, uh, sorry, librarian, got out with them and all my units that were tied down in combat moved out, so these guys legged it away from them. Razorback advanced over here, and the bikes attempted to race off the board, but even with a command point my advance wasn't quite enough to get them to safety, so they've got to live another turn of fire before they can escape for the points. Uh, in the psychic phase, my newly arrived librarian smited the Vindicator for one hull point and put Might of Heroes on Vulcan um, to give him a total of strength 8, 5 attacks, toughness 6. So, uh, yeah, um, he was going to become a bit of a badass. Uh, his rerolls then really helped the Stern Guard. The Melter weapons targeted. Oh no, first this squad targeted their melter gun at the Vindicator and finished it off and the combi melter at the Rhino but failed to wound. Then the Stern Guard all fired at the Forge Fiend. Um, this Forge Fiend here obviously as you can see isn't there anymore. Uh, the Vulcan rerolls plus the chapter tactics plus the Flamecraft stratagem just cooked it. 
Um, over here, the plasma and bolt weapons were somewhat less effective, only killing a single Chaos Marine. Before Vulcan pulled off quite a glorious charge into the Forge Fiend, he suffered no damage from Overwatch or Counterpunch, and did, I believe it was six wounds to it with his spear. Uh, strength 8 and 5 attacks is just really nasty. Vulcan is a bit of a beast in this edition, but he is somewhat vulnerable now with those two characters there and somewhat out on his own, so we shall have to see if he lives this turn. Um, still got that Vindicator at full health and a threat. Forge Fiend at least won't be able to shoot me this turn even if it moves out. So uh, yeah, I think I may have turned the tide there, but it's uh, certainly not over yet. We've got some very nasty Chaos units to deal with. Here we go, Chaos, turn 3. So Chaos looking to counterattack my counterattack this turn. He disembarked the um, the big Chaos, War uh, Chaos Marine squad from this Rhino and swung the Rhino round to encircle the Stone Guard. Um, and over here the Obliterators just wandered up to the bikes and proceeded to shoot them to bits. So my bikes are gone. Real shame, was hoping they were going to be one of my better chances to score some points, but uh, alas that wasn't to be. In the centre here, the Psychic Phase saw his Sorcerer fail to cast Prescience, but successfully smite the Librarian for two wounds. Uh, before the Vindicator and this Chaos Marine squad killed a few from the two surviving or two of the surviving tactical squads over here. Um, he then killed my Librarian with the shooting from this traitor squad um, and then did really quite a smart move knowing that if the Chaos Marines charged the Stone Guard they'd get butchered by the flame weapons. He charged the Rhino first which took some damage but is still alive and made the charge meaning the rest of his uh, units, his Chaos Lord, his Sorcerer and the Chaos Marines could charge unmolested. That then led to complete butchery of the squad. Six casualties plus another one for leadership for uh, nothing in return. And over there the Chaos Marine squad pulled off a charge against the Plasma Gun Tactical Squad, wiped them out before consolidating into here. Vulcan did manage to finish off the Forge Fiend in combat which was nice, but to add insult to injury he managed to consolidate his Sorcerer into my Land Raider uh, so that that one little guy on foot there, yeah, that's holding up this entire tank. Just doesn't seem right, but them's the rules, and Sam's played them very well. So uh, yeah, I'm getting bogged down again. Here we go, Space Marine turn four. So as we head into turn four, by the end of the turn, I had to have everything over the halfway line, or it was going to fall off the board. The only unit that was going to be tricky with was the Land Raider. It was stuck in combat and couldn't fit through the gap there. So what I had to do was back it off back the stern guard out of combat and then use this melter gun squad here to kill off the sorcerer. That opened up enough of a gap for my land raider to pull off a charge into this depleted chaos squad here. Just getting it over the halfway line. So I've uh, saved my land raider and taken down his sorcerer. Other than that, the one surviving razorback is pushing to the edge of the table. Um, the Stone Guard and these guys hanging out here, and Vulcan doubled back on himself to charge this squad. Only killed one, suffered no damage in return, and is quite happy holding them up for a turn or two. This squad had obviously run out of combat again, and these guys pushed up and did some shooting. Uh, for minimal effect, I think killed one guy from here. So, uh, not a great turn, but Vulcan lives, the Redeemer lives, and we're all over the halfway line. Here we go with Chaos turn 4. So the Chaos strategy of delay and disrupt continues. Obliterators tried to intercept the Razorback, uh, put four uh, wounds onto it but failed the charge they attempted. Um, other than that, um, the Rhino and the Chaos Lord went in either side of the surviving Stone Guard, um, locking them down and killing two of them and the Vindicator shot for the tactical squad that were there and as you can see they are no longer there. In assaults, um, yeah like I say two stone guard died in that combat for nothing in return. Vulcan did kill a couple of um, of those guys who will also need to take a leadership which they pass and the stone guard need leadership which they fail so he's actually dead. Uh, Vulcan took a couple of wounds, he's on his last wound now so situation's not great there. Um, 
And the Land Raider failed to kill this guy, which is a pain. If I'd killed him, I'd have a bit more free reign next turn. So uh, the cutoff point for uh, the explosion that's rippling up the board is now about here. So I really need to get moving with some of these squads, or we're falling off the board next turn. Anyway, on to Salamander, turn five. Turn five, and we're still running away from the collapsing board edge. The Land Raider went as fast as it could, advanced almost to the table edge. Um, but unfortunately wasn't able to do any damage because it had moved out of combat. It's so ridiculous that a Land Raider gets completely unable to shoot because it's driving away from one Chaos Marine. But hey, life is life. Uh, this squad pushed up, killed the Chaos Lord, so that's uh, his character taken down. And then charged into this combat where Vulcan killed a couple um, and the squad failed to do anything. And these guys charged the Vindicator, failed to do anything. But I did manage to get the razor back off the board, so that's finally some points on the table, but I don't think it's going to be enough. But here we go with the fifth and potentially final Chaos turn. Turn five, and possibly the final opportunity to stop some of my most powerful units getting off the board for the Forces of Chaos. So he backed up this squad here, um, and that allowed the Obliterators to shoot at Vulcan and finally killed him. So uh, that's a big chunk of points lost there. Um, not much else happened. He killed, uh, didn't kill any from this squad despite shooting them with a few things. And the Vindicator failed to do any damage there. But the loss of Vulcan is big. And this squad are now impeding this squad from getting off the board. But it's not definitely over yet. I might still be able to pull this back, but the game's got to go on for another turn to do that. So we need three plus to carry on. So three. Game rolls on for another turn. So I um, did the maths and worked out that I needed to get everything that was off the, on the board off the board to win the game and that at least one unit was too far away to uh, do it. So I kept everything on the board ready to um, basically do some damage and then get off the board next turn. So these guys were the ones that couldn't get off so they just moved up as far as they could. Land Raider moved to the table edge and these guys moved out of combat with the Vindicator. Land Raider wiped out the squad there with its Flamestorm Cannons, almost killed that and missed that. Um, they then tried to, uh, this tactical squad tried to finish off the Rhino, but it was saved on a 6 thanks to the cover, but they did kill the last survivor of that squad. So I need Sam to not wipe out any of my units this turn, and the game to carry on for one more turn, and I can run everyone off the board and be fine. But let's see if that's going to happen. So Sam knows if he wipes this small squad out here I won't have enough models to win the game. And the obliterators are just within range. He's rolled up 10 for their strength, he's about to roll to hit. Okay, not great, but there's enough hits there to do the job. It's twos to wound. Four wounds, what's their, uh, their AP? Minus one. So I've got four wounds at minus one, so four four ups. We make it, just one guy goes down. So after that poor showing from the Obliterators, he killed off one with the shooting from the Rhino, and then the Vindicator got three shots off and rolled a triple one to hit. Their bacon is saved, but for me to have any chance, the game has got to go on. It does. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but excuse Sam's language. I'm trying to make this channel family friendly-ish. Okay, so... I need to get these guys off the board. I need a 3 plus to be in range. And it's a 4. So they are off and out of here, as is everybody else. They're moving off, that's moving off, and that is game. Thank you very much for a very fun game there, mate. Right, so uh, after that dramatic ending, um, we recalculated the points just because um, I was a bit unsure, it didn't quite seem like enough, and I realised I'd missed the land speed out of my calculations on the power rating of my army. That meant that instead of winning by a point, I'd lost by a point. So uh, yeah, sad days for the Imperium, but victory for Sam. Nice one there, mate. Okay, so after a little bit of uh, post-game adjudication there, which uh, was uh, only fair, because I, I thought my maths was wrong, and yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> it's a victory to Sam and the Iron Warriors by a single point. Yeah, um, that mission felt a little bit just weird. 
it's, it's not entirely balanced, I would say. It's yeah. a case of the Imperium get one or two units off, they've won it, sort of thing. And yeah, if they the, get the right high value yeah. units off, the Terminators had gone off, that would have completely turned it around. Yeah. But uh, hey, it is what it is. Um, it's uh, a fun narrative game. I certainly felt the, uh, the pressure that was kind of uh, inbuilt with having to get my units far enough up the board to stop them falling off. Um, so I guess that kind of captured the, the theme of the narrative quite yeah, nicely. Yeah, we, we had fun with it. Um, yeah. I'm going to be looking forward to getting back to normal games because I don't like these Conor games really. Yeah, I think I've enjoyed the Conor games, but I think you know it's time to get back to uh, trying my army out with some uh, more straightforward games and maybe even bringing a couple of different armies to the table. I've just about finished the most basic upgrades I need for my Dark Eldar to make them work in 8th. Yeah, I've, I've been playing my Gene Cult a lot lately, so I'm kind of glad to get some chaos out and find out the Codex is actually working. Mm. The stratagems are really nice, So, although I did burn them through 7 command points by turn 2. So. <laughs> oh well, use them or lose them. There is that. Yeah. So you used to have one left at the end of the game. No, I'd, I had spent that. I'd used it on a reroll for Vulcan save, I just ah. hadn't bothered to actually change yeah. the marker. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but um, yeah, I thought the um, what was it? The obliterators, big improvement with the codex. Yeah, massive improvement with the codex. Their shooting's really effective now. Although I just couldn't find their power fists. It's yeah. just not on their profile anymore. No, they don't have them anymore, from what I've heard, which is a yeah. bit of a, a nerf. But their firepower was actually yeah. getting back to where it should be. It just uh, yeah, not what they used to be. Yeah, a little play fun. them a bit differently. I mean, keeping them reserved was right because I didn't. I, have enough units to cover the whole board Absolutely. so I could use reaction yeah no that was the right play with them and uh, yeah a good fun game in the end yeah. I think I was definitely surprised with the Vindicators mm, oh yeah they outperformed <laughs> what I was expecting I thought Vindicators were probably the weaker of the Space Marine support tanks in the in the Codex or in this edition but actually they did a good job tonight yeah I think one of them one shot no it was a metal gun uh, one shot the land speeder mm. Yeah. Um, but it took two shots to kill a Predator, which is no small feat nowadays. No, not at all. And, you know, you could even, um, you know, get a uh, get an extra one somewhere down the line, do the line breaker <laughs> formation. Yeah, maybe. It's just that triple one at the end made me go, oh. That's dice. Dice are dice, and they'll do that to you. But anyway, yeah, good game. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Bye.